One of the interesting aspects of a Power BI report and semantic model is to have the ability to make things dynamic. Uh, for example, you may want to have selection of fields and then the field that your visual is sliced and diced by it changes by that. Or you might have a selection of measures and the value that your column chart is showing changes by that. And this is possible using parameters in Power BI, which I have explained before, but in this video I'm going to talk about field parameter and how that can be used without writing any code, without writing any DAX. You can use it simply to enhance your visualization and take it to the next level. I'm Reza Rad from Radacad. Let's jump into this video. So let's assume this scenario that you build column charts or different visuals in Power BI, table visual, and you are limited but what, by what you design as the developer, as the report visualizer in your report. Once you build your report, once you publish it for your audience or for users, they cannot go and change the structure of it. They can go and interact with the report. They can go and select on that column chart, which would then highlight or filter other visuals in the report. But for example, if your um, chart is sales by education and they don't want this slicing and dicing by education, they want to do it by gender, for example, or by something else, by another field, they cannot do that unless they have edit ability and they want to do some development stuff in Power BI, which we don't want the users to go and do that, but we want to give them this capability to go and change it. Uh, fortunately, this is possible using parameters in Power BI. There are two types of parameters in Power BI. We have Power Query parameters, which are for developers, for report developers, to go and change the way that the data is populated. I have multiple videos about that. We also have DAX parameter or what if parameters in Power BI, which are normally designed for the end user to interact with. And there are two types of that what if parameter. One of them is numeric which I have a video about it. One of them is fields parameter, which I'm going to talk about it in this video. It is not a new feature. Fields parameter has been around for uh, multiple years now, uh, but it's very useful in building your solution and take it to the next level without writing any code. If you look at my, um, my Power BI file here, let's say for example this one, I'm going to close the extra one. Uh, so this Power BI file, I want to build a visual such as this. I want to have internet sales, or I just probably just search for sales amount from internet sales. So I want to have that. Uh, this is the total internet sales. And then I want to slice and dice it by a field from the customer table such as education. And I'll drag and drop it here and it shows me a bar chart like this. Now this is fine, this is quite um, simple uh, available for me. If I want to change it from English education to another field, I can simply remove that and bring another field such as gender instead. If I want to remove that and bring something such as English occupation instead. I can do all of these because I'm the developer. This is Power BI desktop development environment. I have ability to change what is shown in the axis and all of that. Now we want to give this capability to the user. So what I'm going to do is I'm removing that field in the axis. I'm just keeping the field that is shown as a value. And then I want to create a parameter including all the fields that I want to be in the Y axis in this case. So what I'll do is I'll go to the modeling tab. Uh, in the modeling tab, there's a place that you can go and create a new parameter. And the type of parameter we are going to create is going to be fields parameter. I have talked about numeric range in another video, which is really interesting type of parameter as well. But in here, I'm going to create a fields parameter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this something, let's say customer fields, because based on customer fields, I want this to change. Uh, and then I'll go and expand dim customer and I'll add all the fields that I want to be part of this parameter, such as education, occupation. I go and add something such as commute distance, 
gender, um, things such as their total children, yearly income, everything that I want to have. And uh, one thing is that this is not limited only to the customer. I can even expand other tables and bring it from other tables as well. But let's uh, for now just have it here because I called it customer field. So I want to have the right kind of understanding of it. But there is nothing limiting you from bringing fields from the other table. Now, once we add as many as fields we want here, then uh, I also leave this add slicer to this page. So what happens is that when I click on create, this is going to create a slicer in my page. You see this slicer right here. I'm going to um, show these step by step. So this is the slicer, including all the field names that I have selected. We also have this new table generated in the semantic model, which is quite interesting because that is what field parameters uh, do. So it creates this new table. You see customer fields is a new table with one column, same name as the table itself. The table is generated using a DAX expression. When I click on the table, I see the DAX formula of the table. This table, this uh, curly brackets is actually um, signs in DAX to create, to construct a table. I have explained that in another video as well. Uh, so what it has done, it created a table with these rows. Each of these is a record in as a row in that table. Each, ta each record has three columns in it, uh, the name, uh, of that um, of that field and the field value coming from that field and an index to be able to find it. So this basically creates that table. In order to see this table, you can actually look at it here. So this is uh, the table. So the field name in terms of like what it looks like from the modeling perspective, uh, a label name for it and an index. And this all created automatically, you don't have to do anything about it. It is just created like that. I haven't wrote any line of text. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to this visual and I'll bring that field, the field that was customer field, I'll bring that in the Y axis of this. Sorry, I didn't want to have this like that. I'll change it to bar chart and then I'll bring this to the Y axis of a bar chart. Bar chart. So as soon as I do that, you see that this shows me bachelor, partial, college, graduate degree, which are the values of the very first field selected here. There is always a default option. So you can choose whatever you want to be default as the very first field. And now by changing this, I'll make this a little bit bigger so that you can see, by changing this to occupation, commute distance, gender, total children, yearly income, you see this changes just like that. So I gave my users the ability to go and change a visual by the field that they want without writing any DAX code, with just uh, a simple process of creating a field parameter in Power BI. And that works just as simple as this. Um, all tables can be used in this process. This is one usage of that. Another usage I'm going to show you is this. So let's say I have created a new visual in here. Let's say this visual is a um, table visual. And in this table visual, I'm going to bring fields from the date table, such as calendar year and month number of year. English month name is a better one. So here I have years and months. Now, uh, I want to add measures in this table. And I have a lot of measures. As you can see, I have a measure table, which again, I explained how to create measure table in another video. But I have a measure table and I have plenty of measures, especially related to time intelligence. I have sales, sales last month, sales quarter to date, year over year, percentage, variance of that sales year to date, year to date fiscal. Now, I want to give the ability to the user to go and choose which of these measures they want to see in the table. Because if I add everything in the table, it would be uh, quite a wide table. They may not need all of that. So I want to give them this ability to change it. I can use field parameter again for this kind of scenario. What I'll do is I'll go to the modeling again, new parameter, I'll create fields 
parameter. This time I'm going to call it something such as sales measure selector or whatever you might call it. And then I'll go under measures. As you can see, this is not limited only to fields. You can also add measures in here. Then I'll go to the measure section and I'll add every measure that I think can be useful here. Quarter to date, last month, rolling 12 months, things such as year over year percentage, variance, year to date, fiscal, as many as I want, right? Once I create that, then I say create and add a slicer to the page. So what happens, it is going to create the same table structure as we had in the previous example. And it is going to add this slicer beside it as well. And in this slicer, then I can uh, select whatever I want. If I go to my table and add the field from this table, so this table is also created here, as you can see, as a new table. I'll go and add the field from this table into here. Now, when I add it here, you see that all the fields are added in here, all the fields that I have in my slicer. I'll make this smaller so that we can see it bigger here. So all the fields that I have in my slicer is here because by default, no selection means selecting all. Now, if I go and select something, it will only show that value. And you can see how this is performing like that. Or if uh, I use control and select multiple values, it shows those multiple values in here. You can play with this setting in the slicer formatting. You can say, well, I don't, for example, allow um, the ability to select multiple items. You might say I want only single select. So even with control, no one can do multiple select. Or you might say, well, no, let's keep it in a selectable, multiple select, but not multi-select with control so that you see this checkbox and it looks more interesting. Uh, the rest is playing with your slicer. What I'm telling you in this example and what, I, what you show in this example was a really simple use case of using field fields parameter in Power BI without writing any line of code, with just creating that parameter from a group of fields, from a group of measures, and you take your Power BI report to the next level, just simply making it more dynamic for your users to use, as a result, less bottleneck on your development efforts. I hope this video helps you to implement uh, your solution in Power BI easier and better. If you like this video, video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.